1952, this poem, Bread and Butter. Not far from the Orpheum Theater was a corner grocery store on Second Avenue. Peering at the cold display, nose pressed against the glass, I stared intently at the food. Tubs of cream cheese, vats of butter. The next refrigerated case held meats and assortments of cold cuts. On the counter was a dizzying array of smoked and pickled fish. On the far side of the wall was a dairy case, frosty bottles of milk and cream. Behind the counter were beet breads and packaged pastries. A hundred different smells drove me to hunger. Mother was buying food. The grocer's nimble fingers adding up the prices on the shopping bag. Occasionally, Mr. Wageman would look up, smiling at mother, dressed in a summer dress, puffed sleeves, her breasts rising even and slowly, in time to the ticking of the store clock, an advertising gimmick from a brewer that bore the legend, Miss Wrangle, 1952. <laughs> <laughs> it was summer, warm days and hotter nights. In the coolness of the grocery store, the grocer added up the tally, finished, Pencil tucked in his right ear, he and mother exchanged glances. Reaching up with his large hand, he grabbed a babka made of rich dough and raisins. Here, son, I'm going to make you something special. Right here and now, just as I promised your mother. Cutting the loaf, spreading butter, opening a jar of strawberry jam, one-handed. Coating the bread with a thick red layer, adding sprinkles of white sugar, sizing it, shaping it, until he was satisfied. Leaning on the counter, he handed it to me. Smiling again, he spoke in the privacy of an empty store. I'm a man of my word. His eyes meeting my mother's. The scene chaperone under the auspices of Miss Rangel, the patron saint of broken dreams. <laughs> what I knew was what I could see and touch. There in my outstretched hand were two pieces of bread transformed into the most delicious cake I ever had. Thank you. Same area, 2014. A wise man, this is the modern day love story, a wise man like Philip, a wise man on Second Avenue, known for smoking twisted Italian stogies. That's me. And blowing smoke in the face of those who disagreed with him, once said, to be in love means you can't fall asleep because the real thing is better than dreaming about it. Wow. <laughs> the way she dressed, she could have been a nun. But under the quiet clothes was a set of breasts that were absolutely beautiful. An ass that wouldn't quit. Nice long legs, topped off with a pretty face. All in all, the kind of girl that every mother wants for her son. <laughs> he was the typical college jock. MVP, league player, high scorer. You name, he did it. He even knew the difference between geometry and algebra. To him, one was harder than the other. <laughs> Secretly, they watched each other from afar. One day, they were at the same coffee shop, eyeing each other, hormones working in crazy circles. She was curious. He was eager. She wanted him. He was willing. She conjured up images of sweating bodies lusting for each other and holding hands afterward. He smirked and thought of her as just a, as another trophy. Their encounter could have been awkward. You know, time is relative. One can recall something from the past in the time it takes to put a coffee cup down. Was it the way he looked, or how he stared at her, or his thin lips curling at the corners of the mouth that caused her to reconsider? A full life was before her. Trusting her instincts, she saw the benchmarks for relationships, career, ambition, sexuality, family, and more. Determined, her mind made up, she got up and left without a backward glance. He, the college jock, ladies' man, experienced in fast talk and flattery, random hookups and one-night stands, lost before he knew what happened. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.